Then I'd like to welcome all of you to this training, uh, Federation of Jewish Men's Club International. I'm Benny Sommerfeld, and uh, I'm part of the e executive committee. And as such, I have a, a portfolio of training and leadership development. And we have taken uh, different initiatives, and uh, one of them is to do uh, regular club training on a monthly basis uh, to discover or, or to talk about uh, to talk about what's important for your, for you and and and, and the different clubs around the uh, country and Canada. So in every region has different issues, and we're trying to work with each regional uh, president so they can influence the topic of choice that we're going to have. And that's the kind of idea we involve one of the region, and we call that then you become a part of uh, like a host region, and as such. Uh, when we have a training, the host region will have uh, five to ten minutes to talk a little bit about the region because uh, it, uh, this is also an opportunity for everybody that uh, signs on that uh, you will be more familiar with the different regions and what uh, what's going on in in the different regions. So uh, we are having this kind of kickoff training event. Uh, with the uh, MAR, Mid Atlantic Region. And they, uh, so uh, Lester Shapiro is uh, your regional president. And uh, he has kind of voiced that what's most pertinent for the clubs in MAR and so many other regions, but is about succession planning. So this is what we're going to talk about tonight. We're going to talk about succession planning. We have uh, made we have, we have a presentation later on for all of you to listen to, and uh, uh, we will we have the following kind of setup. So there's we're going to have a little introduction which we are doing right now, and then I'm going to have Lester Shapiro talk a little bit about MAR, uh, and then we will go into the presentation. And inside of the uh, the presentation, we will have workshops or breakout rooms, which you are familiar with. And I know um, that I think we are 37. So we'll discuss about what we're going to do for breakout rooms. But what we are going to do, since MIR is the host uh, region, uh, they will have their own breakout room. And you will have then questions to discuss about uh, the issues that pertains to succession planning and you can talk uh, we'll i think we will set aside 35 to 40 minutes for your breakout sessions and uh, and then we will divide us up uh, the our, our our other participants in maybe two rooms and we will also have that kind of a discussion uh let's see here yes it would help if you can take and change your well, add to your name uh, besides just what region you belong to or, or the three letters there so it's easier for us to know divide and conquer when we do the breakout rooms so um, you can go right you go up to the, your, your square if you do gallery view you can look at your own square click on the uh, three dots and there is rename and you can then just add your region to it so it's easier for us to identify the ideal uh, uh, for going forward is of course that we would like to have as many response or many clubs as possible and in in the future we, we might actually then divide us up in each region but i think today with that uh, i'd like to welcome all the clubs and uh, club member presidents and we have some regional presidents and also some uh, other uh, club represent uh, representatives to this training i'm looking forward to having this discussion i see robert can you have a question yeah i am i on, yeah i uh, am representing the president of my club and i i don't really know the region i'm from the bay area cold congregation cold far i was going to put northern california but can you give me the initials of a bay area no, Bay Area, you Western region. It's the Western it's region. Easy. You Western region. So what's that, right. WR? It's w WR, yeah. Thank you, thank you. You're welcome. Thanks for being here. Yeah. Okay, so with that uh, introduction, I welcome all of you for this session tonight. I'm very excited to see all of you here. Um, 
And I'd like to present uh, Lester Shapiro from uh, MAR, regional president. And I want to say also, I want to thank you, Lester, and uh, that you're, you're taking upon uh, the uh, collaboration with us to, to kind of select the topic. And uh, the floor is yours. I first want to thank Benny for inviting our Middle Atlantic region to be the inaugural host for this series of international training sessions to import, and importantly, to allow us to choose a very significant and timely topic of leadership succession planning that is facing many of our clubs throughout our organization. And as well, I extend my deep appreciation to, to Dr. Paul Davidson for being our presenter this evening, help guide our work to help support each other together. During my president's report this morning at our regional board meeting hosted by our member club, Arzine Temple Men's Club in Penn Valley, Pennsylvania, I noted, as I have many times in the past, that our region is indeed a busy one. And that is very evident today with having our regional board meeting this morning with a full agenda to plan our regional programs and events of support. And then just following this evening with, ho with hosting this highlight international training session to further show our support. Our Middle Atlantic region, the gold colored region, encompasses a relatively small geographic area, including Southeastern Pennsylvania, Southern New Jersey, and Northern Delaware. You could probably drive from one end of our region to the other in less than an hour and a half. But in that area, we have 17 member clubs with our proud, proudly just adding two new affiliates, Beth Zion Beth Israel of downtown Philadelphia and Bethel Near Tummy Men's Club of Brumo, Pennsylvania. We are very proud of all of our member clubs and all the wonderful and dedicated support that they are offering to the congregations in our region. Earlier this year, we began a regional newsletter titled the Achava, or in brotherhood, with our first edition coming out this past December. In each edition, we are putting the spotlight on one or two of our member clubs to highlight each. And this, this also to show off the uniqueness of each of our clubs and their worthwhile achievements. Our first edition featured our member club, Congregation Brothers of Israel, who while being a small club and congregation, achieved both a Torch Award and a Quality Club Award during the pandemic. We titled, we titled their story, The Little Club That Could. In our second edition, we highlighted our member South Jersey Men's Club, who holds the unique distinction of being the only international club that is not affiliated with the synagogue. This very dedicated club meets regularly at the South Jersey JCC and is involved in many social action, many social action programs that highly benefit the community at large. Our last edition featured our two new affiliates, BZBI and CBENT, as they are finally known by many in our area. BZBI Men's Club has a long and storied past, but their men's club declined in recent years, and now with new support, they are back up and running. And with CBANT Men's Club, they have, been, they have been participating in many of the initiatives of the FJMC already, including distributing yellow candles annually and participating in men's club Shabbats. And now we, now we look forward to working with both of these clubs as partners. For our upcoming edition, we're looking forward to highlighting our Northeast Philadelphia located club, Shara Shemayan, and their unique story is that they are really called the Congregations of Shara Shemayan as being a conglomerate of 14 merged synagogues that have joined over the years. And as well, they are a very dedicated men's club offering strong support for the community in our region. And we look forward to highlighting many more of our clubs in further editions, as all of our regional clubs are truly unique and of course highly dedicated with all their various programs and events to benefit their congregations and communities in so many valuable ways. Again, as mentioned at the start, we are a busy region that is proud of all the programs and events to support all of our member clubs and our regional community at large. Each year, we proudly offer our clubs a regional LDI, Leadership Development Institute, with next year being our eighth annual event. This event is named to honor, in honor, well, to, not to honor the memory of our past dedicated regional board officer, Hirsch Munchnik. Our recent event, co-chaired by our board officers, Jason Waxman and Steve Marks, was held this past November with Added Israel Men's Club of Marion, Pennsylvania being our gracious host and featured valuable sessions on leadership training, program and event ideas to, to attract and encourage young club leaders, helping to navigate the hidden treasures of the international FJMC website, and helping to gauge leadership potential. And we're looking forward to working to soon on the work on, we're, and we are looking forward to soon planning our upcoming ninth annual for this coming fall. Our region is also a partner in the Quad Region Retreat for those from the Northern New Jersey, Hudson Valley, 
and Metro New York regions. Under the leadership of our regional committee co-chairs, Elliot Miller and Jack Marine, we are much looking forward to our upcoming retreat at Camp Zeke in the Pennsylvania Pocono Mountains next month from June 10th through June 12th, with all sorts of exciting, stimulating, worthwhile, and of course, fun programming to help bolster our camaraderie with all of our FJMC brothers at the scenic venue. Our region has for many years also hosted a Man of the Year event, and notably in the recent years with including a Youth of the Year component added through the long time and generous scholarship program offered by our regional trustees. We have proudly not missed a year with the pandemic and last year honored our 2020 honorees in a wonderful and meaningful virtual celebration. And just this past March, under the leadership of our regional officers, Larry Nathanson and Stephen Pilchick, we were back together in person at our member congregation out of Cheshire in Elkins Park, Pennsylvania. Of course, with a hybrid live stream to accommodate all, to honor 11 most deserving men of the year and two dedicated students mm -hmm. from our region. And just this morning at our board meeting, we discussed the early plans for our upcoming Silver Anniversary 25th Annual Man and Youth of the Year event upcoming for next year. We are also proud of our efforts to work in partnership with our international organization, including the work of our board member, Michael Dubrow, as focal for our Shoah Yellow Candle distribution efforts, and as, and as well, focal for our work with the Imagine Life Initiative. And to our regional officer, Mark Podon, for his efforts as focal to spearhead our publicity and support for the worldwide rap celebrations held throughout the region this past Sunday, this past Super Sunday, February 13th. And notably, we shared photos from many of these worldwide rap events in the past edition of our newsletter. I also want to recognize the value work of our regional board members, including our past regional president and current international first vice president, Alan Budman, our honorary president, international vice president, Mark Cohen, past regional president, Bruce Fagan, and regional vice president, Larry Nathanson, for their dedicated work on the significant international FJMC inclusion initiative. While making sure to be a strong partner, support partner for all of our member clubs, our region, in partnership with our member clubs, is also dedicated to supporting as well our regional community at large. In that regard, our Middle Atlantic region over the years through our Golden Keep Up concerts and Tour de Shoals bike riding events has raised close to a million and a half dollars to support the needs of Camper Mon the Poconos. This includes in the past supporting the camp with an indoor gymnasium, renovating all of the bunks, and supporting funds to help begin the residential TICFA program at the camp. With our joint meeting set for the later this month, we are looking forward to working again with Camper Ma on a joint fundraiser for the spring of 2023 to help benefit further with their addition of a dedicated vocational center to further support the ongoing needs of the TICFA program. And lastly, our Middle Atlantic region has just been given the high honor to be the host region for the upcoming 2023 International FJMC Convention. We have just recently named our chairs of our respective regional convention committees Jason Waxman and Stephen Pilchik, and are also very appreciative to our past regional president, Joe Swerdlow, who was a past convention chair as a, and who become our regional convention advisor, help guide us in our extensive planning as being the host region. We look forward to welcome you all with open arms to our city of brotherly love, June 29th through July 2nd, 2023, and invite you to come early before and stay late after the convention to enjoy our wonderful plans to spotlight and showcase all the exciting and fun things to do in our Philadelphia area, especially at that time of the year. Again, I appreciate all of you being on this evening as we work and support each other together. Thank you. Very good. Great. Well, thank, thank you, Lester. And uh, anybody have any, any questions? Did you guys have it, hear it clearly, or was it just my computer that had some issues with the, with the? Just you, Benny. It was, it was fine. Yeah, it was fine. It Very was good, good for us. Excellent. We'll close the recording. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, was there any questions for Lester? Hi, yeah. Lester. Yeah. Rich Neb, Barter Region FJMC. Oh. Great. Great. Yeah. <laughs> Could you please post a link to your most epic and wonderful newsletter? I would love to use it as an example for my clubs. Really, of course. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Rick. Yeah, you, you can post it in a link on, on in the chat box for everybody. Okay. Uh, okay. With a little luck, we um, 
we have the presenter coming on board. Let's see here. So, as a matter of fact, we since we have a little time before uh, uh, Paul Davidson is going to come up with a, his computer, uh, it would be easier if you added your uh, your uh, na the region on the in the very beginning. So it's easier for us to kind of divide and conquer. Uh, and for you that came in a bit later after the introduction, we would like everybody to put their regional letters in the very beginning of the name so it's easier for us to kind of divide you up into the different breakout rooms so if everybody takes their time what do you do it? just add them in the beginning because then what happens is when you have longer names they actually then disappears out of the screen And everybody has the ability to change, rename themselves. Penny, uh, what other topics are you considering for future? So uh, for next uh, month, we are looking into uh, how to engage and attract younger, but younger people into the um, onto the board and, uh, and into the meetings. So attract younger members and to attract them in, in a way that they also become engaged into the uh, the club uh, leadership level one thing is to have program but it's also important to recognize the uh, the lead from a leadership perspective the, that they are engaged or will look forward to become engaged in and take upon a, a board position and how that can be done in the most effective way so that's where we are headed for for next uh, month in the end of end of june don't know how to do it So do you have the date for that one yet? Well, we are trying to make uh, either the second or third third Sunday of uh, the month as a standard time. And uh, I, I think that's it leans towards the third Sunday of the month that we're going to make. Uh, and, and then the, what we do with the host uh, region is that the host region's time will be the preferred time <laughs> so when it is in the midwest then Ooh. it's going to be a preferred midwest time so they can be the mo most attain uh, can be uh, attending it we will always record it but when we come to breakout rooms we will not record breakout room sessions we will record what we do now the introduction and the presentation of the region so everybody who listens afterwards can get a better sense of all the regions that we have here within FJMC. And then when we come after, come back after each breakout room sessions, we will have a, a sum up and and then that and also some kind of an action plan as ending the training. And of course, that will be a part of the recording. So of course, we we if if you are going to be the uh, uh, if you are going to look at uh, at the training afterwards, then uh, then you will take a little break when we take the break for for the, so this we can go into the breakout rooms and make your own conversation there. So it's not just meant to to look uh, and and see the the shorter recording, but to take take the time to do the exercise. Uh, yes, I I see here from people that the third Sunday in June is Father's Day, so may, maybe we'll do uh, the. Uh, may we'll we we'll might move it a week or so it's always going to be something but we will of course try to avoid any uh, national holiday any am i can you hear me who is yes, this we can. paul paul okay yes, yeah. yes we yes, can paul. paul fabulous okay all right there you are excellent great timing so, um, so here is Paul Davidson, in spite of the fact that we have uh, <laughs> internet down in one city or one neighborhood, uh, he moved himself to another one and here it is live and kicking. So I'd like to introduce Paul Davidson from uh, Newton 
Oh, no, Sharon, Massachusetts. Hey, here we are. Uh, yes. New uh, England region here. Exactly, New England re region. And um, I've asked him to help us out and get a sense of the core uh, concepts about succession planning. And, uh, and then uh, we will uh, give him the floor for, uh, yeah, for whatever time you need to take. But we have enough time to do our breakout sessions, which was which, which going to come afterwards. So with no further ado, welcome, Paul. I'm pleased Perfect. to uh, see you li live there. And uh, you should be able to share your screen and uh, off you go. I'm planning on Thank you. It's great to see you all. Thank you so much for joining. Uh, with this, um, it's uh, going to be an exciting program that Benny has for us, and uh, I'm going to be, can you see my screen right now? Can people see my yes, screen? Yes, yes, yes. yes. So, your screen okay. is visible. Yeah, it looks great. If I go to slideshow, can you see that? Yes, we can. Yes, we can. Perfect. Okay. All right, good. So I'm going to be talking to you about succession planning. And uh, it's something which we have valued very much in our club. And hopefully it's something that is important to all the rest of you. Uh, we are going to be using this information to engage in discussion later on. So please pay attention. And we will probably be making this PowerPoint available to you. So uh, when we think about, you know, secession planning, it, it's important to think of why, you know, why does this make a difference to us? And I think for many of us who are involved with FJMC or involved with other organizations, we recognize the fact that uh, leaders can burn out. They can get tired. Uh, oftentimes you go to the well one too many times. And if we're not careful, uh, we're going to take those people who are motivated, excited, and leaders, people like you who are on this call tonight, and we're going to wear them out. So we have to find ways to keep them fresh by keeping organizations fresh. Another issue that we see is that program can become rather stagnant after a little while. If you have the same people you know, in place, and I've speaking, spoken to clubs all over the country, I know there are programs where somebody has been leading for many, many years, the, the core group leads, and they do the same thing, you know, kind of similar programs. So, uh, through a succession, we have an opportunity to really develop a broad range of new programs. You know, this over-reliance on the small number of leaders also means that there will be a limited number of views and opinions and ways of seeing things. And we see when that happens, we don't get that kind of uh, growth and pollination that really makes for a great club. If any of you have been to the program fair, at the international convention, one of the things you'll find is by meeting with many, many people from all over the nation and the world, you get ideas that nobody would have thought of otherwise. And so it's very, very important. Another issue is that we need to appeal to new and younger members. As with any organization, if you do not become generative in terms of developing more people who get engaged, who want to step in and take leadership, eventually you start to wither and then your program dies out and your club, your region suffers. So this is a very important reason to focus on succession training. Um, another piece too is that when you have, you know, talented leaders in your club, you want to ensure that they're able to take the next step as well. So they're able to move up maybe into a regional role or into an international role. And if they are stuck, having to run the club or just take care of the region, then you're gonna run into trouble. They're not gonna be able to stay fresh and motivated and get to do new things either. It's also important in terms of getting rid of this notion, well, this is the way we've always done it. We have all been in places where they, they've said that to us. You know, this is the way we've always done it. We know that never seems to work out very well. It may work out well for a while, but after a period of time, that gets very old and then people lose interest and then membership shrinks and then people stop attending. So we want to you know, be fresh and open to new ways of doing things. And uh, we also want to ensure that there was going to be growth for our clubs, for our region. And that's only going to happen if we're able to engage new people uh, in the process. So I say it all starts with membership, you know, and I love, you know, to get new members in, you know, whenever possible. Um, when we were hiring for a, a new rabbi not long ago, 
um, we did a video talking about our community. And I, I'm very blessed. They come from Temple Israel and Sharon. It's a wonderful, wonderful um, program. I know Elliot Feldman's out there. There may be others from uh, our from our you know club and so on. But uh, the first thing I always tell them is that you're going to enjoy the community. But if you want to know where the strength, where the backbone of a lot of the congregation is, look to the brotherhood. Um, and whenever I see somebody who's new uh, in Shul, I have him mad who's maybe considering joining us out oh, well you've got to come join the brotherhood you got to come see what we do we invite them to events to dinners or whatever um and you know always find out what are they looking for you know people will join things where they feel there's something in it for them uh, and so i say find out what are their interests before talking very much about the kind of things we do I'll, t I'll ask them, hey, what are you into what do you enjoy what kind of activities what would make you interested and then you can tailor what you say to them based on what they're going to be interested in and how being a member of your club may be very much of interest to them and then very quickly try to introduce them to other people um, you want to you know kind of get them feeling like they know a number of faces ideally and then if they start to come which inevitably hopefully they will the trick is to find some small role for them. So I remember I was talking to a guy who it was into fishing, for example. And I said, great. I said, how about if we have, you know, uh, a fishing program? And if we have a fishing program, would you be interested in coming? Uh, might you be willing to help out a little bit with that? And, you know, if it's something that they're really geared up to do anyways, almost always they're going to say yes to something like that. And I think in terms of encouraging new members as well, it's a great idea if you can develop programs around their interests and their needs, um, which really shows that you're being very responsive to them rather than just saying, uh, these are the eight programs we do during the year. I think you'll really love it. Um, it really makes a difference when you can actually offer a program, create a program around some of the things that they may mention. The next step, uh, that's foundational is getting people engaged with committees. So first we have the membership, then we've got to work towards getting them involved with the committees. And I, I say, you know, use event planning as a forerunner to committee involvement. So if we can just get somebody to participate in helping out with the program in any way, shape, form, or manner, maybe they're checking people in, maybe they're going to make a few phone calls, maybe they're going to take emails, maybe they're going to just take account of people that are, you know, in terms of figuring out how much food you're going to need. It doesn't matter what it is. Some tiny role, it's that foot in the door approach, you know, that salespeople use all the time to try to at least hook somebody a little bit, you know, and we're trying to do this in a genuine way. You want them to have fun, you know, so you start with something very small, something that goes along with what they're interested in. And then when they do it, just you know, praise the heck out of them, encourage them, um, try to get them to the point where they say, hey, this this does seem like a good thing. This is something I would want to do more of. Uh, and then these, you know, as somebody becomes a more active member in your club, these are the people you're eventually going to go to to move up in terms of leadership. But it starts with the committees and then you can, you know, give them an important role in a committee. Eventually they can head a committee or something like that. But helping out with the planning event, begins it and then moving them into the committee structure really makes a difference. Make sure it's something that aligns with their interests though. That's really important. When you think about looking for leaders, you know, I try to think of what are the qualities of a leader? And, you know, I came up with this list, you know, first of all, find people who want to serve, you know, who are doing things for the right reason. They're motivated to try to give back or to add something to your club, to your region, to international. Somebody who is motivational, somebody who can inspire others. This makes a dramatic difference in terms of whether or not somebody's gonna wanna follow what they have to say. You know, I think an important feature too is finding somebody who is quick to give credit and kavod to others, but isn't really seeking it for himself. Because otherwise, you know, it may be more of a power trip. And we've all seen that too. Those don't necessarily make the best leaders. You want people who are going to elevate others. Uh, I try to find people when, you know, I've you know, been involved with leadership, whether it's, you know, locally or regionally, internationally, who are good listeners. People who are, you know, really focused on what the others have to say more than they feel they need to do the talking somebody who is not so reactive and really 
takes a moment to think things through. If you find somebody who really, we, we, we have a new rabbi coming in July, very excited about, you know, just started a family. We're hoping he will probably attract like-minded individuals and families. But one of the things that I was struck by and uh, that I spoke to people about was the fact that they said, he seems mature beyond his years. And he really listened to what I had to say. And when I asked questions, he thought about it before he gave a response. I think these are wonderful qualities of leadership. And as a result, you'll find people who tend to act rather than react. Those folks are going to make decisions for the most part. I also think individuals who have some sense of vision to others to make that tangible, to make that real. When you are trying to strive towards something, you have to be able to paint that big picture. You know, I, I always, you know, I, I tell people I've worked with, you know, uh, you show me, you know, you tell me the why, and I'll show you that we'll, we'll find the how. We're going to find out a way how to do it if we understand why you want to do that, and what you're looking for. Uh, leading by example, teaching by example, rather than somebody who's just going to delegate. You want somebody who also has shown the ability to kind of be there and lead and get involved and roll up their sleeves. Clear communication, of course, is critical. If somebody is not one who people find that they can really understand so well, that they're muddled in the way they describe things, um, you're going to have problems uh, that are going to start with programs and then ultimately will lead to administrative issues. Look for somebody who's able to bring others together, a connector, so to speak, somebody who really likes to engage others and someone who, who earns the respect of other people. And, you know, these people, you'll see them in show, you'll, you know, notice in Kiddush they're a little bit different. When they come to a, a program, you'll get that sense. These are the things you want to look for for people you're thinking about moving along in succession. So I have a couple of uh, quotations that I thought were really important. Um, say a little, in, you know, first is Pierre K. Avot, and I think my, my thing up top is blocking me a little. Uh, I don't know if I can move it. Yeah. Say a little. Oops. And do, uh, I do much. And uh, receive all men with a pleasant countenance. Pure Kea vote. Um, a good leader is a person who takes a little more than his share of the blame, a little, little less than his share of the credit. And uh, this last one on the bottom, true leaders don't create followers, they create more leaders. Hope you like that. Um, and let's see. So we want to think about mapping out some things for your future, again, for your club, for your region, or for international, whatever it is. And so it's important to start out by assessing, truly assessing where you're at, you know, from the club, regional level, what, what are the kind of strengths and weaknesses you have in at least three areas. One would be programming, one would be membership, and then the third would be leadership. Um, and when we think about succession planning, you really want to think of well, what are going to be our needs over the next several years. And as I'll go into in, in a few more slides, we like to think actually longer term around that and to evaluate and adjust your current succession plan. Now, different clubs and regions go through different phases. They have different needs at different times. So this kind of planning stage is absolutely essential. You know, it's interesting in our club, we actually want a gold torch award for administration. Uh, when our uh, leaders started to run a, their own mini retreat. They went off site uh, to a place and they would do exactly these kind of things, kind of mapping out how the next couple of years are gonna look. What are the needs you know, in terms of programming and what can they do for growing membership? And especially trying to think about how do we want our leadership to go? What are the directions we're gonna be heading? What are the, the talking points that we're gonna focus on to ensure that we're moving to that next level? And that can then lead into the discussion of you know, tapping people who are currently leading things, you know, who may be the chair of a committee or who may be uh, you know, a secretary or treasurer to move on up or, and maybe you realize, hey, we've got this new person, newer person who shows tremendous progress. And we think this is somebody we really want to bring along because we think this individual is somebody who people are going to get behind and are going to be able to uh, follow and then learn to lead from. As I mentioned before, you always work from this tangible vision of a big picture of where you want to go. 
Um, you know, and I, I know in our club, we always talk about we want to really strive to be the very, very best we can at a variety of different things. And that vision really helped us, you know, over the years to do incredibly well. And I guess we then get to that next question in mapping the future of what are you going to need? In order to get to where you want to be, and that may be, you know, certain physical resources. It may be programmatic resources. Certainly, in terms of you know what kind of members you're seeking, but most definitely in this case, who do you need? What do you need in terms of leadership? So, a lot of this all starts with the nominating committee or whatever you have um, in in place. Most programs have some set of bylaws which govern how people are selected to be, you know, given some of the administrative roles in the club. So always check on that. And they can be done by committee, officers, uh, past presidents are usually an excellent place to look uh, to get support around that. We'll talk about that a little bit more. And you want to start to think about finding individuals who have competencies, abilities, that are tailored to the kind of roles that you're gonna need to fill. Um, and then you will present a slate of officers, likely at a board meeting that you've, you've chosen. And you know, in terms of figuring out who makes the most sense, utilize your past leaders, utilize your past presidents. They've been there before, they know what they're doing. Uh, it doesn't have to be a president, it could be a, you know, some past leader, you know, secretary treasurer, vice president, whatever. But uh, I, I think for us, one of the things that's made a huge difference in how we've done has been that our past presidents tend to be very, very actively involved. And these are people who were past presidents a year ago, five years ago, 10 years ago, 20 years ago. Most of them come to our board meetings on a regular basis and are happy to get involved. And when it comes to picking out people who they, you know, are likely to be good for the secession plan, they are an outstanding source of information. Um, and, you know, don't be afraid to ask somebody to fill a role, you know, because one of two things is likely to happen. It could be three. Uh, what, what the best outcome is they say, yes, I'd love to do that. You know, I'm honored. I would you know, love to do that. A secondary outcome, um, well, I guess there's always the option that they say, no, I have no interest whatsoever. That's usually not as common. Uh, another common response is, you know, I really don't have the time right now, but I appreciate you offering it or considering me. And this at least gets people thinking down the road. I know there are a couple of guys in our club who I had tapped for leadership roles. And, you know, I remember at least two of them who it was just not their time. The kids were too young. They had too much going on. But uh, now they are, you know, ascending to the presidency and vice presidencies of our organization. They've really, you know, stepped up when they had the time because the idea was planted. And they know they, there was an interest in having them lead. Um, and I think, you know, on a more regional level, when it comes to the succession planning, you want to make sure that you're really engaging in club visitations because it's going out, seeing the clubs, how they're doing, going to their board meetings and stuff. That you're really going to get a sense of who are the upcoming, you know, movers and shakers, the individuals who are likely to be able to take on a leadership role. And, uh, of course, from the regional level, you know, trying to find people who have been club leaders who are maybe somebody who is finishing the presidency of their club um, and may not have a role afterwards. Those are great people to seek. Um, when you try to find your leaders, uh, I say encourage growth, right? And uh, for whatever reason, it, to me, it really uh, made me think about what happens with a, like a young sapling you know, in a forest surrounded by tall trees. And those tall trees are you know, the great leaders uh, who are in your club or your region or who are national, international. And the job is to help make room for them to grow. And as with a, a tree, which is, you know, like a, a mighty oak or pine or whatever, you know, it's going to take time for development. So you don't want to rush things, you know, and as they say, nourish their interests, you know, focus on the things that they really like. And, you know, I, I certainly know in our program, our club, we have people who have very different interests. So sometimes we have somebody with a very strong interest in Israel or somebody who has a very strong interest in Jewish religious observance or somebody who really is interested in tikkun olam or somebody who is interested in education. And I think the goal is to let people naturally move in that direction. You know, a tree 
will grow in the direction in which can, it can get its light, you know? And so you want to be the one, you want to be the light to these people. You want to encourage their specific interests so that they feel like they are able to, you know, grow in their own direction. And, you know, it doesn't matter that the, the past leader is focused on something else. There's room for all of it. And you want to give them room to spread out eventually too. So, um, you know, focus on what makes them unique, what are their specific interests, and you always want to encourage them, even before you're tapping them for any leadership roles, you know, strive to do something. So if they're involved with a program, you know, to try to do the best they can with it, and again, find things that specifically interest them, but when you're, they're tapped for leadership, you know, get them again thinking big. How can they take a program idea? How can they take a committee idea and make it bigger and better in some way? And you want to offer them some protection. You know, young trees, young leaders would not do well unless they felt protected by those around them. So we want to shelter them a bit. If you can, you know, especially when they're early in the leadership phase, if you can shield them from some of the, you know, the nonsense that goes on, that's a good thing. Um, and, you know, you want to stand by them, but don't crowd them out. So, you know, it's about providing some encouragement, but it's not, you know, standing, you know, over them and overshadowing them. You, you want to give them space to be themselves. And I say, share the joy, have fun, you know, make sure they're having fun. People do, you know, something that's going to be enjoyable, they're not going to stick with something if they're miserable. And, you know, enthusiasm tends to be infectious. So make sure you share that. Now, Alan uh, Cahan had put together this growth ladder uh, image. So I, I just borrowed that from another presentation, which was on um, the FGMC website. Uh, it's a presentation there. And he talks about how there's this natural progression of leadership. You know, in her, his case, committee member to committee chair to officer to VP to executive vice president to president to immediate past president. And, you know, it allows you to set basic expectations as you go along. And anytime somebody does something well, always reward the excellence and make sure that they recognize it is an honor to be able to serve. And, you know, as, as Alan says, you repeat the same process for regional and international positions. And I say, you know, we're going to look at the long road, long-term planning. And you want to very quickly set this expectation of a commitment for quite a number of years, usually four to eight or more years. And in our program, uh, people serve as a president for two years. And we have a president and we have three vice presidents. So what, by the time you get into the vice presidential track, you know, that's eight years right there. And then it's an immediate past president. You'll be there for years to come. So um, when people engage in this, they you, you want them to understand you really want them around for Quite a while. There are other programs in which they may hold the, the post for one year. So maybe it's more like four years, but still, that's great. Just make sure they understand you're shooting for the long haul. There are a couple of you know, critical steps in this process, and I know Benny was very helpful in putting together this slide. You know, people recognize that if you're the second vice president or the administrative vice president, you're going to commit to becoming the executive vice president. And the executive vice president is committed to becoming the president. And we know things happen in life and it doesn't always work that way. But most of the time you wanna ensure that they recognize that's the process that you're gonna go through. And that by the time you reach the presidency, you wanna make sure there's a lot of support. Um, when my vice president uh, eventually became the president, I said, you will now call me your conciliary. Uh, <laughs> Get, I'm here to, you know, consult, help, support. Now I'm going to be quiet. I'm going to be in the background. You call me for anything. And, uh, you know, that makes a real difference to somebody. And always, you know, support those below you. Um, and try not to complain too much for people who are below you. If you have concerns, go to somebody who's above you. Um, we don't want to cause the main problems for people farther down the line. Um, and as I said, you're going to use your president, nominating chair, and officers to help select the new leaders. And immediate past president is a great person to help with all these steps. Um, and it's a good idea to think about coming up with your slate of officers, your succession plan, about six months before you're going to install them. Because you really want to have enough lead time to check with everybody and make sure that you've got all the people necessary to spill your slate completely. And if you're not getting positive responses, to be able to seek others out who might be able to do. And 
it's critically important also to not do this by email or text or something like that. You want to make a phone call. You want to speak to somebody. Uh, it should be highly personal. And I think it's, you should really strategize as to who is the best person to reach out to somebody, somebody who may have, you know, a relationship with them. It may not necessarily be the president, you know, maybe somebody else. Or it may not even be your nominating committee chair, maybe somebody else. Okay. There's also a suggestion after MC thing about using the triad approach or triad management. Um, this notion of running things using three people. And that really is very helpful in terms of succession and making sure there's continuity as well. So you have somebody who's the current leader doing something and they're taking you know responsibility for whatever it is. I don't care for the program or it's for running the club, whatever, whatever. They bear the importance of the responsibility. But also the recent past leader, could be the immediate past president, it could be the recent committee chair, you know, who gives this sense of this is how things went, this is what worked well, this is what didn't work well, these are lessons I've learned, and they mentor the current leader. So again, it's that kind of support. And then ideally, you always want to bring somebody else into the process as well. Someone who you expect will be a future leader. So this could be a vice president. This could be, you know, co-chair of a committee, whatever it is, because you want them to help out in a smaller way. But they get to watch the process so that when it's their time to take over, they'll be able to do it very well. You know, I, I put it on a three-legged stool because one of the things we learn is that a three-legged piece of furniture tends to be stable. You can usually find a stable point almost anywhere you put that on the floor, whereas if you have four legs, it sometimes teeters. Uh, again, we use this to build continuity, support, mentoring, which is so, so important in succession planning. And, you know, I, I try to tell people, I said this for many years, you know, if you want your group, if you want your leaders to be red hot, then you better be white hot. And if you're red hot, they'll be hot. And if you're just hot, they're not. You always, you know, as the leader in your group, you have to set the tone. You always be one notch above what you expect the others to do. And using this kind of triad approach really helps development of leadership skills because you have several generations going through it at once. It's kind of, you think about how a grandparent may teach a parent who then teaches a child who may then teach a grandchild. Um, think of it in that same line. And this is much more likely to lead to success in your programming. Um, mentoring, absolutely an essential skill in succession planning. You want to bring people along. These are some of the key skills that you're going to utilize in mentoring. Motivation to me is one of the tops, you know, providing, you know, helpful advice, but not unsolicited advice. You know, ensure somebody gets successful. I don't care how small the success is. You always want to point out where they're doing well, give them direction, offer coaching as needed. You're there for support in any way, um, you know, help them with goal setting and of course training like you are doing right now, because after participating in this, you're going to be uh, help train others up in terms of succession planning. Now, I do want to mention a couple of critically important resources we can find from FJMC uh, at the FJMC.org website. And if you take a look, you know, under annual activities, um, the biennial convention, LDI, for example, programs, how to attract younger members to your club. You go on the clubs tab, you can tap into consultants who can help you with succession planning and leadership issues. There's a whole section on volunteer leadership tips and uh, a club membership campaign under the awards. I strongly encourage people to look at the Torch Awards because those are the best programs that came up at the biennial convention. And many of them are centered around leadership and succession planning and so on. You can learn from some of the best programs out there. In terms of publications on that tab, you'll find online webinars, just as you're doing right now, podcasts, and the FJMC Advantage, which is a bulletin newsletter, which gives you a lot of good information. And then the FJMC store, there are books from, on the section that says resources for leadership. To me, this is a quote from me, if you want to strengthen your club and create leaders, get your members to retreats and the FJMC convention. All right. I'm quoting myself here. I've said this for many, many years. And Elliot, I know you're on there. You would say the same thing as you help run the retreat. And guys like Benny, you know, who are, you know running uh, international events and so on. When you have an opportunity to engage with other leaders, you know, from around your region or the country, 
it really gets you psyched. And, you know, I, I'll tell you one of the things that's great. And, you know, uh, on the left side of this, you know, the international convention things, and we're, we're looking forward to Philadelphia in 2023. And on the right, you know, we have the Leadership Development Institute, LDI, and then we have regional retreats and so on. Um, it's not just what happens at the event, it's what happens after, you know, the kind of post-mortem. And I know for us, sometimes when we uh, have driven to a convention, and when we're driving back, people are just popping up with ideas and they're enthused and excited about things they want to bring back to the club. So I, I want to just make sure to mention that to me, that's one of the most important pieces. It's going to help you with bringing up new leaders and succession planning. So to summarize, these are the things to focus on. Number one, you want to track new members. We need a constant pipeline in order to have succession eventually. Offer very small roles to get people going, just helping out with the program. Uh, again, tailored to the individual's interest. Committees are where we really start to, <clears throat> you, know, hard, you know, that's where we plant the seeds for future leadership. Um, use a personal touch when you're reaching out to people to nominate them for a role and give them specific reasons why you want to choose them, why you think they're likely to do very well. Um, you'll use that growth ladder and we said, Set the expectation of involvement for multiple years, uh, increasing amounts of responsible leading up to presidency of the club, of the region, of international FGMC, so that they really get accustomed to the expectations and how to, you know, uh, engage others and create other new leaders. Um, keep your former leaders involved. It really makes a huge difference. And again, in terms of mentoring, they're some of your best folks out there. Uh, use that triad approach. We have a, a current leader, a past leader, and a future leader all working together to attain something. And uh, we always want to encourage participation in ongoing training. Again, I congratulate all of you for being here uh, doing that. So I thank you very much for your kind attention. I will stop sharing my slides at this point. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, excellent presentation, Paul. And uh, it, it will be available. We will send out the link later for all the participants where you can find it. And uh, we are now going to uh, start the um, uh, breakout session. So I, I like to do the following. So please um, try to follow the, the simple instruction. I have uh, MAR. You, you will go to your own region, right? So all the breakout rooms are listed as regions. And I'm, I'm sorry that some alphabetically, I, I kind of didn't completely follow that, but uh, you'll find your own region and, and you go there. I like the EC members not to go to any room at all uh, this far because, uh, and, and, and also Danny Mando, you can wait because I like to do the following. MAR will can go ahead and, and start the, the breakout session discussions. And then I like to see where everybody else falls so we can bring in or divide us up in meaningful sizes for the other breakout rooms. So please go to the breakout room button, click on Let's it. See, one thing before you go to the breakout room, one yeah. thing we talked about was I, I've given eight discussion questions uh, to work on. Um, I don't know if there's going to be time for all of those, but no. um, I, I highlight a couple that I would like Lester and Benny to make sure we cover. And those would be questions one, four, seven, and eight. I want to make sure everybody gets in one, four, seven, and eight. Can I give one other quick shout out? I see David Singer is on. David, you did a phenomenal job, by the way, of making sure that there were uh, presentations um, available on the uh, Google Drive and make sure that there was, you know, I could use those materials to help prepare tonight. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, all together now and uh, recognizing that it's a bit later than we anticipated for the summary, um, I'm going to ask the, uh, well, I'm going to ask the breakout session leaders to help us summarize it uh, and send it out to all of you because the questions that I like everybody to go away with is the last question uh, that is really important. What action steps can you take away from today's session that you plan to apply within your club or region? And I'll read it again. What action steps can you take away from today's session that you plan to apply within your club slash region? It's about action and what I like and what I will do uh, with the, uh, the breakout rooms uh, uh, session leaders 
is to come back to you what they heard you say in in each of every one of uh, the four groups that we have. And I know we have some technical uh, issues, and I apologize for that, but uh, it, it's a little bit challenging uh, sometimes to get this together. But I like to thank the uh, the breakout room session holders, uh, David Singer, uh, Elliot Feldman, Lester Shapiro, and Paul Davidson. Paul, thank you so much for an excellent presentation, and it was inspiring and fun to listen to what you had to say. <laughs> thank so, you so much for putting this together. Yeah, so we will continue with this, and since we, I know that the, the next uh, third Sunday will be Father's Day, June 26th is our next uh, Sunday where we going to have training and the topic as mentioned before is how to engage younger members inside of your club as well as part of your board makeup and what we have done then with succession planning is actually the things that then will be part of that mix because with a successful succession planning the younger uh, members of your uh, of your clubs will actually hopefully be part of your next slate so I will respect the time. It's six o'clock here or seven o'clock there or eight o'clock there. Actually, for me, I'm in New York and it's nine o'clock. So I like to say thank you for all our participants. I wish you a great rest of your day uh, and evening. And uh, I'm looking forward to come, you know, talk to you again. And if you have any comments, please send the feedback to Lester Shapiro and his email that has gone out on the invitation or myself b sommerfeld at fjmc.org i can type it quickly into the uh, uh chat here again yeah, thank you for all, uh, thank you benny for all your help and and, and support and allowing us to, to host this inaugural session yes and we will all contact next time again some uh, region that's going to be the next host region so from all of us to all of you benny can i just say one thing yes so in 2011, I, I was co-chair of the Young Leadership LDI, you remember that. And I yeah. see at least six guys on this call that were young newbies at the time. So <laughs> there is Benny, David, oh man, a few others. And I, I'm, very proud, I'm very proud to say that these guys are, were, were new at the time and, and, and 11 years later, I'm still here and they're still here. So that works. So that means that we have something good it's going for. A good for sign. A good sign. Yeah, now, is. Dan Granite, go to sleep. Okay. <laughs> so with that, I'm going to post the recording and, and give you information where to find the presentation uh, and, and within a week or a week and a half. Okay. Thank you so Great. much.